Hey guys, Corey, Famous Media, and today we're looking at the Canon 7D Mark II. So here we are, look at the Canon 70 Mark II, and this view that my videographers got me on here, just for some fun, is a famous uh, old classic movie from here in uh, Manhattan. And just by the view here, uh, by the Lincoln Theater, let's see if you guys can guess in the comments and tell me which movie and what was the star of that movie. Right here from this restaurant behind us to the closing scene of a movie right there by the phone booth. Let's see if you guys can guess, just for some fun right there. But here we are looking at the Canon, a 70 Mark II. Most places still have it on pre-order. I've got my hands on one, and I'm gonna be shooting on the Sigma Art 18 to 35 ultra wide angle zoom, f1.8. And let me start out by saying this is one of the highest quality lenses I've ever used, but that's a review for another time. I'm doing a review on that this afternoon as well, but my God, this lens is amazing. In fact, it's probably better build quality than most, if not all, my Nikons. But this isn't about the lens, it's about the camera. So let's talk about the features of the camera. 65 autofocus points, and they're all cross-type. 65 autofocus points, we got that right. 65 all cross-type. So this thing should just snap focus instantly. With its servo modes, you can customize the tracking in the camera like nobody's business. This could track all kinds of cars, horses, people running around, it's insane. You can set it to ignore objects coming in and out of the camera's uh, focal range. You can also uh, set it to track one subject the whole way. This is an amazing camera. Uh, it does up to 10 frames a second, dual digit six processors, native 16,000 ISO. The only real downfall, not really a downfall, but it's a three inch screen versus the 3.2 and the 5D uh, Mark III. If you're wondering how it compares to the 5D Mark III, I did an ISO sharpness test in video and photo mode as well as a low light um, and high ISO test right here in the streets of Manhattan between both cameras using the same lens. But we're gonna go ahead and take a walk in the streets like we always do right here in Midtown and take a look at the 70 Mark II and see is it really better than the original 70, which I did have, which is the camera I left along with the 5D Mark II to go to Nikon. So let's see if it's improved. Let's take a look at it, see how she looks on the street. Let's put it to work and have some fun, let's go. I got the camera set down to 640 ISO. We'll see how that works. The shutter is really quiet on the 70 Mark II. You can barely hear it. Uh, I have to like really listen for it. Whereas the 5D Mark III is like ping. You can actually hear the shutter. This is a really quiet shutter. It almost seems like I'm operating in quiet mode. Just like click, click. It's like barely noticeable. Not really a complaint, but you have to listen for it because sometimes you're taking pictures. You can't really hear it. So. Take a couple of shots here. The landscape, and I'll try to get some people as they're walking by. The 70 Mark II feels pretty good in the hands. Feels very similar to the 5D Mark III. 5. Sigma Art 18-35 doesn't focus as fast as Canon or Nikon, but what I will tell you is the build quality of this lens overall is just as good, if not maybe slightly better than some of the Nikons, if not most of them, or Canons. It's a very solid build, and I'm going to be doing a review on that and compare the different shots between different Canons, because this is ultimately the best lens you can get for the Blackmagic Cinema production camera, but that's a, a review for a different day, like I said earlier, but I just wanted to, I don't want to harp on it, but this lens is just astounding for the price. Like, it's, you're practically getting it for free, I'll tell you, that's worth a lot more than what they're charging. But the 70 Mark II feels really balanced in the hands. Uh, overall, it feels comfortable. It, it's a really, really comfortable camera to hold. It's not heavy by any means. It feels just like a 5D Mark III. Uh, the screen size and, and some of the features are different. Um, the video on the 5D Mark III is noticeably sharper, which I'll show you later on in this video. We did the test earlier. Uh, it's not substantial, but it's noticeable. The 5D III is sharper. Uh, the 7D, though, does produce pretty good results. Dynamic range is similar to the 5D Mark III. I'm going to put it in servo mode. And I, I really want to try uh, 
doing a shot against the cabs here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on continue to track subjects and ignore possible obstacles. Let's see how that works out. Gonna select that. There we go. I almost forgot there's a locking button here on the switch. So here we are in AI servo mode. I got it to ignore possible subjects or objects uh, entering the frame and to continue to track my subjects. So we're gonna see how well that does when these cars start coming. Uh, the servo function is very good on the 7D Mark II. Tack sharp. That car wasn't going very fast, but it was still pretty darn accurate and snaps the focus very quickly. It does stay focused and stay right on its subject. And I was able to take a picture of the guy walking across the street and it didn't track the person that was right beside him and behind him a little bit. It actually stayed where I pointed it, which is really good. The servo function is awesome. Let's track a couple of these cars going by. Good thing we got the 1.8, which is amazing. So we don't gotta crank the ISO too high. So well, here we are at about 1250. Beautiful, just beautiful. Tracking the cars, there's other cars on the road, but it stays right where I put it. The servo function is definitely Definitely great on this camera. And if you're into sports, the 70 Mark II is definitely for you. If you're not into sports and you're into portraiture, but you're on a budget, 70 Mark II is for you as well. But if you're not into sports and you can afford to spend the money, the 5D Mark III is better for weddings and portraits, uh, stuff like that. But the 5D Mark III does shoot at a pretty decent burst itself. So I'm gonna take servo mode off. We'll just go back to shooting one shot again. It's doing pretty well in the dark because it's not very bright out. It's right at sunset. And me and my videographer Johan like to be shooting at 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon right before sunset when it gets dark. I don't know why. It always ends up to be that time. But we're still going to bring you the great review. And for anybody who thinks Black Magic doesn't do a very good job in low light, it's pretty dark right now, and Black Magic's doing a great job. We're shooting on the production camera, of course. And this thing does like to shoot quick. Let me tell you, this camera does fire away. take my card out so I don't kill the room but let me show you how fast it fires and how quiet it is did you guys hear that in the microphone very quiet here's it firing away so it is definitely quiet it's like really hard to even hear it like I have to put my ear up to it it's crazy how quiet it is now here is the high firing mode right now which is louder. As you can see, the buffer started to fill a little bit, but it does fire very quickly. Servo mode and high fire would be great. If you're tracking subjects, it'd be perfect. I like how it feels in the hand. I just, I like the servo function overall. It performs, the camera's great, the colors are good on the screen. The screen is a little small compared to most DSLRs at three inches, but it's acceptable. The menus are very similar to the 5D Mark III, uh, also very similar to the 6D. So if you've used those cameras, you're gonna feel right at home. If you're coming from the old 70, things have changed quite a bit. 
It's also native to 16,000 ISO. So we should be able to push the ISO here on the streets and, and really, really push it and, and still get great usable images. But we're gonna test that out. This is a really good shot right here on Columbus and 60th. I love old churches and old structured buildings. This 18 to 35 really does allow us to get some decent wide angle shots on a crop sensor APS-C camera like the 7D Mark II, which is a 1.6 crop. Eighteen on this camera would be about the equivalent of about 28 millimeters, so on full frame. So it's not too bad. Four millimeters shy of a typical 24 millimeter lens, but not too bad at all. If we we're using a 24, would be more like the 36 range. So it's good that I have this Sigma Art 18 to 35. Plus it goes down to 1.8, which really helps us in low light as well. A little bit of a traffic jam right here this evening. Man, this, one, this thing wants to fire away. It just wants to go nuts. I have to turn the, the quick mode off, go back to single mode. The 70 Mark II is great. It's, it's an awesome camera. Uh, hands down, if you're not looking to get a 1DX or a 5D Mark III, this is definitely the best Canon camera to get next to those cameras. And one thing to note, this steps up into 1DX territory in a way. Now, I don't really wanna say, you know, it's as good because it's not. Uh, it's definitely not. The price and everything else that goes along with it is completely different. You know, you can look at the camera side by side and know the 1DX definitely trumps the 70 Mark II, but 10 frames a second, 16,000 native ISO for less than $1,800 is great. Not to mention, it's got dual card slots. Dual card slots. There isn't a Nikon camera that has CF and SD card slots together on a crop sensor camera at all. In fact, the only camera you can get that on is the D800, D800E, D810, and stuff like that. Of course, the D4, D4S, which is XQD cards. But what I'm saying is you can't get an SD and a CF card slot in any Nikon camera unless it's the professional line in full frame. So with Canon having the 70 Mark II being a crop sensor camera, less than $1,800 in dual card slots, and the weather sealing on this camera and its build quality, you can't go wrong. It's, it's a really, and I mean a really stunning package for the price. Canon have packed a lot into it. And with the dual digit six processors really makes uh, image quality and low light capabilities even better than before. So this camera definitely outshines the 7D without a doubt because the original 7D when I was shooting on it, you get all kinds of noise and grain even at 640 ISO. And right now we're gonna push it to about 1600 which would probably look better than the 7D at 400. The Mark II is definitely a great camera. A huge step forward. And if anybody's wondering, is it worth for me to get the 70 Mark II over, say, a T5i? It really depends on your budget and what you're looking to do. So it really is a great camera. And if you can afford it, I would definitely opt for this over the T5i uh, or any of the lesser offerings from Canon because this is definitely a big step forward. It's like a professional camera. Well, it is a professional camera. So you figure the T5i and those other cameras uh, that are lower on Canon's line are in the six to 800 range. By the time you get it set up with memory cards, you're almost at $1,000, $800 more, and you could have a 70 Mark II. So just think of it like that. So here we are in the dark. I had to put on the Canon uh, 17 to 55. Give my videographer the 18 to 35 1.8 so we could have some better low light abilities and some wider shots. Gonna turn this ISO up to 3200 here. Really testing the low light capabilities of this camera. So we're really gonna be able to test the low light abilities of the 70 Mark II. It's perfect, pushing it to 3200 to see how it's really gonna perform in real world situations. doing a pretty good job thus far.
know, I'm actually gonna try out video mode right here. Seems like a good spot. Let's go ahead and put it on uh, video. This is internal audio on the 7D Mark II. It's got focus tracking, AI servo built in that you can turn off, but it will auto track subjects. And 3200 ISO looks really good. The 7D really does a great job, the Mark II that is, at, at auto tracking and focusing even in low light like it is right now. We get one more shot over here. Thirty two hundred ISO looks good. Let's push it up a little bit. Let's go to here's four thousand ISO. Push it up to five thousand, and here we are at sixty four hundred. It does on the screen look pretty darn good. Now, you can do 60p, but not in the all-eye. It's in the IPB setting, which isn't as high a quality as the all-eye. The all-eye is a 100 megabit codec. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead here and do some slow-mo. I love the 70 Mark II has the audio meters that you can put right on the screen. You hit your Q button, it'll show you your headphone volume adjustment, microphone adjustment, and you can adjust them while you're recording. And if you hit your info button, you can basically show your histogram and anything else, which is amazing. It's a great camera to use. Just the fact that it has 60p, and is doing this well in low light and shoots this quickly with its servo function and 65 autofocus points, which are all cross type. This camera is a monster and definitely, definitely much better than the original 7D. Now let's do a long exposure here. Turn the ISO back down to 800, maybe a little bit less, more like 400. Slow the shutter down. do a really, really long exposure here.
you out here in the pitch black. Johan's like over there like a tactician trying to get focus on that screen. I really do wish they had put a 3.2 inch screen on here, but no big deal. We can work well with uh, a three inch screen. I think the 7D had a three inch screen as well. So they really didn't do anything with the screen as far as the size, but it's not the same screen by any means. It's definitely uh, higher resolution and better quality in every way. It's doing good at 3200 ISO, that is for sure. He didn't want us to get him on video, but there we go again with, on the streets of New York or anywhere in this country, if you're videoing anyone and they don't want you, it's best to move away. But in reality, it's completely legal. It's like cruel and unusual punishment. Shooting in the dark with the 70 Mark II like this really putting it through its paces. It hates me right now. It's like, why must you shoot at nighttime? I kind of wanted to see what it would do in the dark anyway, so we're really at the right time of the day for that. I'm gonna switch picture styles. I'm gonna go over to standard. That guy was running and the camera tracked him pretty good. Shoot here at 6400 ISO and see what it looks like. On the screen it looks pretty good. A little bit of noise, looks like it's creeping up in the image though. That's to be expected at that high of ISO. We'll step back down to 3200. Horse is always running through Manhattan. It's pretty cool such a snappy camera to focus. It's really, really easy. It just tracks everything beautifully. Even in dark situations like we're in now, which is a true testament to the camera's auto-focusing ability. It's just amazing. I'm gonna take a few more shots in video. Just love the low light ISO performance. We're gonna go ahead and punch it up to 6400. Even at 6400, the 70 Mark II looks better than the 7D did at 640. The low light capabilities of this camera from what I've seen thus far are pretty stunning uh, considering the fact of how the old 70, like I said many times, was crap in low light. It was the crappiest camera ever in low light, or one of them. Let's go ahead and just punch all the way. Let's go 12,800. I have to turn the f-stop down. We got to go down from 2.8 to 4.5 to make that work. Love this tracking and video mode. It's awesome. Very accurate. Not bad for 12,800. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and punch up to 16,000. Kind of scared to do that. But let's see what happens. Here we go in video mode at 16,000 ISO.
Not too bad at all. So I got this picture style uh, called uh, Video X I downloaded from Canon, which is gonna allow us to get more dynamic range. We're gonna be able to bring that ISO down to about 3200 and see much better shadow detail. And here we go. This is now a 3200 and it looks very, very good. Not quite as bright as 16,000, but a lot less noise, obviously. It's got a lower ISO, higher dynamic range for the Video X profile. The shadow details look great. So if you got a 7D Mark II, make sure to get the Video X profile from Canon's website. It's really good for video. The dynamic range is better. It's more of a flat profile, like filmic. Now, I'm just gonna say this honestly. Uh, I don't think it has as much dynamic range or is as filmic and flat as, say, Nikon's flat profile in the D810 or D750. The camera is actually noticeably softer in comparison to those two cameras. And the D750 is noticeably softer in comparison to the D810. So if you're looking at strictly video and you're looking to buy a camera strictly for video and only video, the 70 Mark II is great, but it's nowhere near as sharp as the D750 or especially the D810 and the dynamic range is definitely not as good as the D750 or the D810. Those cameras are monsters for dynamic range and better than the 5D Mark III or the 7D Mark II for that matter. And that, that's just a fact, but this is a great camera, just doesn't have as much dynamic range. So here we go. This is the back side of the Canon 7D Mark II. We're gonna switch it just to the side to show you. This is your mic and your headphone input right here. Of course, you got your flash PC sync and your remote cable. And on the other side, you've got your HDMI out. If I can get this flap open. And believe it or not, your USB 3, which some DSLRs don't have. Flash buttons in the front. Of course, the lens release is right there. On the back side, you got your info and menu, which pulls up the menu uh, on both sides. This is your main menu. The info will give you the information of what you're shooting on and your leveler and all the different settings on your screen. This is your picture control button right here for picture style. And you're gonna go ahead and switch through for HDR mode or multiple exposures or to change your picture style. And as you can see, I got the Video X set right now because we're just doing video and some photos in that profile. So when you're here, uh, looking at your picture style, you can select which setting you want to change. Select it with set and you can change it right here for contrast, sharpness, saturation, color, tone. You can also change your picture style, of course, as well. The rating button is simple. You press play on a photo and you can hit the rating button. You can change the rating from one star all the way to five star or turn it back off. Your zoom in button is to pixel peep. You press it once, you zoom in with your top dial and you can move around with your D-pad just to kind of check out the noise performance you got going on for your ISO or see, make sure it's sharp. Of course, you're playing trash button or self-explanatory. You're gonna take that off here. Now, this is your uh, rear dial. It changes your aperture when you're in live view and scrolls through settings. This is to lock. Your setting button is to select anything you've chosen. This is your D-pad. Don't forget your Q button will allow you to go through and change your auto-focusing to servo, focus, or one shot. And you can use your little mini D-pad back here to go around and change any of the settings you want. Press the Q button again to release it. Up here, you've got your photography mode or video mode. You turn it to the left, it turns in the live view immediately, and that's the start and stop your recording, just like the original 7D. Got your autofocus button right here. You just press that to snap in and out of focus. On the top of the camera here, you've got your light indicator. You press the ISO. The backlight's on, of course, makes it easier to see in the dark, and you can change any ISO all the way up to 16,000. Got it set at 3,200. You just leave it as is, it'll set. Your AF drive, you can go from one shot, high, continuous burst, or slow burst, single mode, timer, two seconds, or the full 10 seconds, or just single shot. So you can go through and change all that. Now, right here, you got your white balance, or auto white balance, tungsten, sunlight, cloudy, uh, your LED, your flash, your custom Kelvin balance right there, your custom white balance setting as well, or just leave it at automatic. Your MFN button on the top, the dial, and the shutter button. Of course, on the side, the great feature about the 70 Mark II is it's got dual card slots, although we're only using one 
CF or SD. So we were gonna bring up the menu, 70 Mark II. You got your first menu here, which allows you to change out all your uh, image quality settings. You can go to image quality, and you can do raw or JPEG in medium or small, and all the different size settings for JPEG. Your image review, you can change it. I like mine on hold. I like to turn mine off manually. Uh, the beep, you can turn on and off. Release your shutter without the card. So here we go uh, with the auto uh, lighting optimizer, which is like active D lighting on Nikon. You can set that here. A uh, different name for it with Canon. White balance and different settings for your color space. Your picture style, your high ISO speed noise reduction is on. Highlight tone priority, you can change that on or off. HDR and multiple exposures. Mirror lockup, you got all kinds of different settings here for continuous autofocus while you're doing video. You can turn your grid display on and off. Silent shooting, these are the different autofocus settings you can change from versatile, multi purpose, or you can continue to track subjects and ignore obstacles. Instantly focus subjects that are moving in and out for like racing, uh, motorcycle races, bicycles, kind of sports and stuff like that. Uh, you got case four, which is for subjects that accelerate or deaccelerate quickly. Um, and then of course, case five is for erratic subjects moving quickly in any direction. And subjects that change speed and move erratically is case six. So you can mess with these and get all different types of settings. Your servo can be set to release or focus or in the middle, I have one setting for each. You got your lens electronic, manual focus and assist firing one shot and all these different settings in here for autofocus, like the lens drive, uh, selectable points and autofocus, 65 all cross type. You can also go to 21 or nine. You can select your area of focus for autofocusing by just going through and hitting the select button or the set button. Go back to the menu, you can select your area of autofocus, uh, your orientation link autofocus points. You can set all this stuff. It is just amazing how much settings are in here. This will allow you to completely change your autofocus and uh, your display while you're focusing and shooting. Um, you can select constant, all constant, pre-focus. Uh, you can disable it. It's just great. You can change everything while you're shooting. This is a monstrous camera for autofocus. I leave my illumination on auto. Um, autofocus status in the viewfinder, you can change that to whatever you want. The micro adjustment is great. This is just some of your playback menus to protect your images rotating, resizing, different settings for magnification. Uh, this is your continuous uh, file ordering and uh, how you rotate tall in your images, format your card. Uh, the brightness of your, uh, your screen will be set in here as well. Your date times, GPS and compass settings. You can check how much space you got on your battery, 36%. You got your video system for NTSC. You can set it to PAL as well. Clear your settings, update your firmware, and here we go into all your custom settings, which we won't get into at this time. So here we go with the low light test. And you know, I should have started higher than ISO 400 because the 70 Mark II doesn't show any traces of noise at all below ISO 3200. So we're just gonna do it anyway for the heck of it. And as you can see, ISO 400, 800, even 1600, no traces of noise whatsoever. ISO 1600 looks fantastic. And moving along to ISO 3200, like I've said many times in other videos, you have to hire a forensic technician to find any traces of noise. And I doubt he will, because the image looks great. Moving along to 6400, and you can see there's a little bit of noise starting to creep into the image, but it's very faint and the colors are not degrading at all. Moving along to ISO 12800, the noise begins to shift a little higher, but still the image is holding up just fantastically. So are the colors. Even at 16,000 ISO, it is a stunning image. There's still practically very little noise in this image. Wow. So here we go with the ISO sharpness test. At 100%, the image looks very sharp. But let's go ahead and crop in 300% and take a look. And shooting photos on the 7D just gives you fantastic images and they are tack sharp. It is fantastic. So let's go ahead and compare the 7D Mark II side by side with the 5D Mark III. And at 100% crop, they both look about the same. It's really hard to tell. So let's go ahead and crop in and take a closer look at 300%. And side by side, they're very close, but the 5D Mark III is slightly sharper but they both do a great job. Let's go ahead and take a look at the video test on the ISO chart. So here we go with the 7D Mark II, and it does look pretty sharp. But let's go ahead and crop in 300%, and you can see it's kind of soft in video mode. Now, I did have this sharpness turned to the 50% mark on the adjustment on the picture style. 
Now here we go side by side with the 5D Mark III. They both look very good, but the 5D Mark III is noticeably sharper. And when we crop in 300%, you can see that the 5D Mark III is still slightly soft, but much sharper than the 7D Mark II. So here we go, let's compare the cameras side by side, high ISO test on the streets. I did have a different picture style on the 7D Mark II. However, I shot at zero EV and checked all my exposures. So they should be identical there. And at ISO 1600 and 3200, the images are about neck and neck. Moving along to ISO 6400, and you can see it's noticeably cleaner, but softer on the 7D Mark II. So it's not as sharp as the 5D Mark III, but the noise performance you can tell here at 12,800 is better on the 7D Mark II. It's noticeably cleaner of an image. Wow, it's cleaner at high ISO than the 5D Mark III. Here we go, side by side, maxing out the ISO on both cameras. Still higher on the 5D Mark III, but much cleaner on the 7D Mark II. Here you go, 300% crop. The 7D Mark II looks a little bit noisier at 1600. At 3200 ISO, they're about neck and neck, and it's strange because as we move along and get to ISO 6400, the 7D Mark II is cleaner. Yes, it's cleaner at 6400 ISO, and at 12,800 ISO, you can clearly see the 7D Mark II is better, significantly better. And the 7D Mark II is slightly sharper. And by the time we move on to 16,000 ISO, even though it's two thirds of a stop lower of an ISO than the 5D Mark III, it's still significantly cleaner. The 7D Mark II from Canon is truly a monster. In fact, it's so much better than its predecessor. They should have named it something else. This camera is just stunning. It is much more of a camera in every possible way than the original 7D. They're not even in the same league, but then again, it's five years newer. The 7D Mark II has better low light performance than the 5D Mark III, which I didn't think was possible even in the video in the beginning. The 7D Mark II has an amazing trick up its sleeve. It's high rate burst, 10 frames a second. It's video X feature that you can download from Canon's website. It's 16,000 ISO native, and it also has 65 all cross type autofocus points, which is more than the 1DX or the 5D Mark III. Dual memory card slots, CF and SD, 60p and 1080p for video. And while the functions of video may not quite be as sharp or up to par with the 5D Mark III or other professional DSLRs on the market, this camera truly accelerates in a different avenue, which is insanely fast and snappy autofocusing with its 65 all cross type autofocus points, which is more than the 1DX, and its low light high ISO capabilities, which are better than the 5D Mark III, which in turn is better, much better than the 1DX. So this camera truly is a monster, and if you're a professional photographer looking for a great sports photographer camera, the 7D Mark II has got the best low light at high ISO performance of any Canon camera ever made, and it has more autofocus points than any camera in the lineup currently, which means the 7D Mark II is not only the best professional sports camera in Canon's lineup, but it's the best professional sports camera on the planet today. So the 7D Mark II is definitely a step up from the 7D with its uh, burst of 10 frames per second. It's 65 all cross type autofocus, 65 autofocus points all cross type. You can track anything with AI servo mode constantly on and you can set it with all those different settings in the auto focusing menu to track erratic subjects that move quickly in and out of the frame where you can change it to stay on one subject. I'm able to track subjects even with subjects around them moving and it stays on point. The auto focusing on the 70 Mark II and its ability to burst 10 frames a second is astounding and it trumps all cameras that Canon have on the market today with the exception of the 1DX. But that's expected, that's a $6,000 camera. If you can't afford the 1DX and you're looking for sports and tracking, the 70 Mark II is for you. And being a Nikon user, it is a gem to use. I can tell you that I'm not biased in any way. I love all cameras that perform well. And the 70 Mark II is astounding for photography. It does a phenomenal job at tracking and it does trump the 5D Mark III and it definitely stomps the 60 as the 60 is not very good at all for tracking. It just has like the one autofocus point in the center practically. Might as well call it a manual focus camera. I know that its autofocusing capabilities and its autofocusing points are not really on to par with today's uh, demands. If you're a sports photographer, it's a sports photographer's dream to shoot on 
The 70 Mark II is amazing. The low light capabilities are great. It's not as sharp as the D750 from Nikon, which is in a compatible price bracket, although that's a full frame camera. But it's not as sharp as the D7100 either, which is about $500 cheaper and has no anti-aliasing filter. And they're both crop 1.5 slash 1.6 crop cameras. Now, the 70 Mark II is not really intended as being a video DSLR, like a video DSLR in my opinion. And the reason I say that is because the dynamic range isn't as good as the D750, the D7100, or the D810 by any means. Even with its Video X profile, the dynamic range isn't quite up to par with the Nikons are today. Do we ever think we'd be saying that, where Nikon's ahead of Canon in the video world? They kind of are when it comes to dynamic range and sharpness, especially with the D810. Now, the 5D Mark III does astounding video, and uh, so does the 7D Mark II, not quite as good as the 5D Mark III. It's definitely not as sharp in video mode as the 7D Mark II. It is a great camera for what you're buying it for. It does what it's supposed to do, which is track flawlessly and a little too good for the price, if you ask me. Video, it's not its forte, but it does do video pretty darn good. So if you're looking to buy a crop sensor camera and you're on a budget, this is the camera for you. Uh, if you can't quite afford it and you're looking, say, for the T5i, look at my review in the T5i. That's a great entry-level camera. But if you want something more professional, the 70 Mark II is definitely for you. If you want something that's going to shoot and track just as good or damn near close to a 1DX, the Mark II is for you. So look a little rhyme right there. The 70 Mark II is definitely for you if you're into tracking high sports and you can't afford a 1DX. If you're looking for video and just video, Look forward to getting yourself a 5D Mark III or something like that because this camera does do decent video, but like I said, it's not as good as the 5D Mark III. And if you're shooting just video, there's no point in getting the 7D Mark II. So hopefully you find this review helpful, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want to purchase this or the lens or any of the gear I review, please support the channel and use the links in the bottom. Please, it helps keep us out here in the freezing cold, in the dark, keeps Johan working here late at night. Please use those links to support the channel, guys. I'll keep all the good content coming. So big shout out going to CSI Rentals in Brooklyn and Manhattan for giving us this camera to bring to you this great review. CSIRentals.com for all your rental needs. They hooked me up. There's the logo right down there in the bottom of the screen. Thanks so much, guys, for hooking me up with this camera. If you guys need to rent anything, check them out. They are fantastic. Quick information to all my Ohio, Kentucky subscribers, anybody in the Midwest, I just want to give a big shout out to let you guys know I'm going to be at the Dayton Mall, New York. I'm going to be at the Dayton Mall in Dayton, Ohio on the 25th of November. So if any of you guys want to meet up with me and pick my brain and talk about photos and you're anywhere close to the Louisville, Kentucky, Cincinnati, Ohio area, it's not too far from Dayton. It's about a 20, 30 minute drive depending on traffic. I'm going to be in Dayton, Ohio. If you guys want to meet up, I'm going to be at the Dayton Mall that afternoon. I'll have a video coming out on that as well. I'm Corey with Famous Media. Don't forget to subscribe. Use the link to purchase the gear. Keep it alive. It's starting to get a little cold out here. You see, and I'm out here for you. I'm Corey with Famous Media. Happy shooting.